and I need your help. I need you to strengthen me. I need you to strengthen my hands to be the best pastor that I can be. We are looking today, folks, at World Nations Sunday. And today is a day we want to honor all of the people from all over the world, including right here local in Canada, all of these people who come together to make up Grace Baptist Church. GBC is a multicultural church family, and yet we are one in Christ. I believe that GBC gives a better picture of what heaven will be like. Because we'll have Christians from all over the world, some 200 nations of the world with saved people will make up God's family in heaven. I believe we have well over 20 different nations of the world represented here in our church. And yet in Jesus Christ, we stand as one family. That's the church with one head. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. And with one purpose, that's to glorify God. That's our purpose. As a church family, we delight in some of our differences. It adds variety and flavor to our fellowship. And yet we are amazed at the many similarities that we hold dear in the Lord Jesus. GBC is truly a family of God here in Surrey, B.C., Our benefits are many, but our purpose remains singular. And that's the glory of God according to the scriptures. That's how we want to glorify God. Some of our benefits include the joy of Christian fellowship together. The uniqueness of our physical differences. The strength and the comfort of our prayers one for another. And the delights of our various food preferences. Our single purpose is to bring glory to God through Jesus Christ as the bride of Jesus Christ. Yes, we are like the bride of Jesus Christ. That's us. GBC is the bride, or perhaps I should say to be technically correct. We are part of the bride of Christ. Now, Proverbs chapter 12, verse four says a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. But a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. And folks, that's what we want to be to our Lord Jesus. He's the bridegroom. We are the bride. We want to make ourselves as glorious and as virtuous for him as we possibly can. You say, how do we do that, Pastor? That's what we're going to talk about. First, let's have a word of prayer, shall we? Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Now, dear, loving, wonderful, heavenly father, help us as only you can to, to take people from around the world and make us one in Christ. We pray that your Holy spirit would get a hold of our hearts. Father, we pray that if there be a Christian, not walking with you properly, that he or she would come under a conviction of the truth today and come back to walking with Jesus. We pray that if there be one watching today who's not yet born again, maybe they think they're saved. Maybe they want others to think they're saved, but they're not genuinely saved. Please, Holy Spirit, open the eyes of their understanding that they may see and understand and properly repent before the Lord Jesus today. Lead us now and glorify yourself. In Jesus name we ask. Amen. So how does Grace Baptist Church prepare itself for Jesus Christ? Jesus is coming. You know that we are the bride. He is the bridegroom. The bridegroom is coming for the bride. We need to get ourselves ready. How do we get ourselves ready? Well, Ephesians chapter five, verse 26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And basically what the Bible is telling us is that the Lord Jesus is taking the word of God and cleansing us, cleansing us from worldliness, cleansing us from anything that does not bring honor and glory to God. That's what Jesus is doing. 
The word of God, the Bible is our instruction manual. It's our rule book. It's our guiding light. Now it's normal for us to be different. Everyone seems to have different fingerprints. We're different like snowflakes are different. That's very true. But what else is true, sadly, is that it's human nature for us to always want our own way. That's how we're born. We come into the world. All we think about is ourselves. We want our own way. So that's, that's a sad part of human nature, fallen human nature, I'm sure. But that's the way it is. And what we need to do is we need to lose ourselves in Christ Jesus in order to find ourselves in Christ Jesus. You say, how do we do that? We do that by putting off certain worldly things, certain habits and practices that are worldly and associated tied in with this world. We put them off and we put on certain habits and practices. We put on certain things that are tied in with the Lord Jesus Christ. You see folks, we need to do this because if we don't do this, the devil is going to take advantage of that. He'll take advantage of, of our earthly differences, for example, And he'll start to use us against ourselves. And this is what happens in churches. The devil gets a hold of the people and gets them all wanting their own way. You know, even people that that are born and raised in the same country are different. You know that you don't have to be from another part of the world in order to be different. You just have to be human and you're different. Those of you who have more than one child, you have two, three, four, five children. You know, the very same children born in the very same household with the very same mummy and daddy sitting at the very same table and eating the very same food, being taught the very same school things, going to the very same church. They're different. Those kids are different. And so We are a church of differences, aren't we? And that's why it's very important that we put off certain things and we put on other things. That's very important. Speaking of, um, of differences, we do want to be different from the world. We really do. And something Jesus said about the world and the nations of the world, he said in Luke 21, he said, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And you know, that's what happens in some churches. Yes. Some Bible believing churches that can happen where this family is against this family and this person rises against this person. And you get this disharmony, this disunity. You get a mess is what you get. And the reason for that mess is because the Christians in that church did not put off the things of the world and put on the things of Christ. We need to lose ourselves so that we can find ourselves. We need to, to some extent, put away differences and put on similarity. We need to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is so important. So important. Otherwise, We're going to end up at war with each other. And God clearly tells us in the book of Galatians, he says in chapter five, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. And so God tells us to put off the old fallen nature. I'd like you to take your Bible and open to the book of Ephesians. Would you do that please? Ephesians go to Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. Ready? Are you all there? Ephesians chapter four. And I'd like you to look please at verse 22 and 23. Look what the scripture says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Wowee. That's the old fallen nature. God is telling us to put off the old fallen nature. The devil is all wrapped up with the old fallen nature, um, which is corrupt. Verse 22, which is corrupt according 
to the deceitful lusts. Deceitful means they fool us. Proverbs says there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. This is part of deceitful lusts. Some people think that these strong lusts are good for them, that they can play with them. They'll be fine, but they don't realize that these things are like serpents and they bite us and they wound us and they hurt us. And God is plainly telling us here that we put off um, the old man, according uh, to these lusts, verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse, um, verse 24, and that he put on the new man, which is after God created uh, God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That true, that new man is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you needn't turn there, but Colossians chapter three also says, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. We must put off the things of the world and put on the things of heaven. We must put off the old man and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'll give you a couple examples. We must put off being hasty with our words and our actions. We must put off being hasty in order to become patient. First Thessalonians 514, be patient toward all men. Number two, we must put off grumpiness and moodiness. We must put those things off in order to become more loving towards others. John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you. Number three, we need to put off selfishness, selfishness in order to become servants one to another. Galatians 5, 13, by love, serve one another. And so while we rejoice in the many national differences that we display, and the uniqueness maybe of some of our daily habits, we realize there's something far more important than whether we eat this for breakfast or this for lunch or how we hold our chopsticks or something. There's things far, far more important than this. And that is the similarities that we must adopt in Christ Jesus. If we are to please God, a grace Baptist church, is the family of God. We're the bride of Christ and we are supposed to operate like a family. And we try to, we try to operate like a family for the 22 years of this church's life. I've tried to operate grace Baptist church like a family. You say, how so pastor? Well, number one, the pastor is the under shepherd of Jesus Christ and is similar to the husband in the family. Now with your Bible open at Ephesians, go to chapter five and look please at verse 25, Ephesians five and 25. Husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. You see that similarity there and gave himself for it. And so Someone might be thinking, well, wait a minute. I thought Jesus was the head of the church. You are right. My friend, Jesus is the head of the church. Absolutely. Just like Jesus is supposed to be the head of your home. Jesus is supposed to be the head of your home. But what he does is he puts in his place, the husband, the husband is supposed to be in charge. The husband will give account to Jesus for how he ran the home. No perfect husbands. I know that in the church, Jesus is the head of the church, but he puts the under shepherd in charge in his place. That's the similarity there. Uh, Jesus is still the head of the church. He is. And the under shepherd there is supposed to run things according to what Jesus says in the Bible. And so we have this similarity that the pastor is something like a husband in the family. All right. Number two, the church people are like the wife to the husband. Now in Ephesians chapter five, look at verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular 
So love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence the husband. Do you see that? Just as the church is to be in subjection to the Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the head of the church. So likewise, the church in our analogy here is like the perfect help meet to be loved and cherished. And together pastor and people together, like a family, like a husband and wife, we bring forth children. Now, Genesis 1 28, God said, God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. The Lord Jesus in John 15, 16 said, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And I'd like you to turn back to Romans chapter seven, just a few pages back. You'll find the book of Romans go to chapter seven. Romans chapter seven, Romans chapter seven and verse four, wherefore my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that ye should be married to another. There's that analogy. He is the bridegroom. We are the bride. We're going to be having a a wedding day one day soon. We're going to get together. Jesus is going to come for his bride. It's going to be a great Wedding celebration happened. Uh, Even to him who was raised from the dead. And then look that we should bring forth fruit unto God. And so here we are as a church family. We have pastor. We have people together like husband and wife. We bring forth fruit to the honor and the glory of God. Now someone says, well, what are, what is this fruit? What is this fruit? These These church children, that's our fruit. What does it mean? Well, I'll give you an example. Number one, it's our ministries, our children's programs. Together, we have produced children's programs for the children to minister to the children. Our teen ministry, together, we have produced a ministry for the teenagers. Our college and career programs, together, as a church, we have brought forth college and career programs, our young married programs, our senior programs, our soul winning program, the soul winners Academy, a wonderful ministry. Absolutely wonderful together as a church family. We brought that forth our bus ministry, although for the present it's set to one side, but we brought that forth together. Our worldwide missions program to reach all of the world. Oh, listen, you ought to be on board with missions. If you're watching and you're not sold out to missions, you're an anomaly. There's something that's not quite in line, right? With God between you and God, you need to be sold out to the great commission. This is the one main job given to the church. We do it local and around the world through missionaries. You need to be sold out. For missions, our Bible college is an incredibly wonderful ministry. It's one of our church children. Uh, Listen, you know what the Bible says in Psalm 127? It says, happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Talking about children, praise the Lord that we're part of a church that has so many wonderful ministries. We're not a church where we sit around and collect dust. We're not a church where we sit around and grow old and we just look at each other. We are the the church triumphant. We're a vibrant church, a living church. We have nine or more wonderful children. We've produced them together to the honor and glory of God. We're doing something good. And listen at the AGM meeting this Saturday, I am excited to present To you church folks, another fantastic opportunity, a ministry that we can start together. We can do it and we can do an excellent job of it. And that's a ministry to the poor, a ministry to the poor. I'll be explaining more about that this Saturday at the AGM. So remember to tune in early 10 to four, 10 to four, get started.
because we're going to be getting right into things pretty quick. So be there with us. Now, someone new, someone new to our church might be wondering about this family relationship of pastor and people. And they might be thinking, well, what if the pastor is a dictator? What if he's a dictator and he doesn't listen to his people? He just always pushes to have his own way. What then? Well, that's actually a very good question. And the answer is similar to what did you do before you got married? What did you do? Did you not check out the person? Was he or she checked out? Did you get to know them? Did you ask questions? Did you pray to God for him to guide your steps? Did you do that? Before you get married, you need to ask, is this person perfect? Are they perfect? Or are they human and subject to weakness? You should ask, is this person a fighter, a bully and a fighter with the scars to prove it? Or are they loving? And are they kind? Is this person stupid? Gullible? Will believe anything? You tell them to jump off a roof, they'll do it. Or are they reasonably intelligent and thoughtful? You need to ask yourself if the person you're about to marry is worldly and tied in with the ways of the world. Or are they following Jesus Christ with a sincere heart? And those are questions that you must ask and answer before you marry that person. And when it comes to being a member of a church, any church, these are also questions that you would be wise to look into and ask and answer about the pastor, maybe about the pastor and deacons. And you must decide on the answer before you become a member of that church. But did you know something that the pastor also wants to answer the same questions. He wants the same knowledge about you before he recommends you into membership. He wants to know, are you a bully? Are you a, a, a fighter with the scars to prove it? Are you someone who only wants their own way? The pastor wants to find out the answer to those questions before he recommends you to the church for membership. So you see it goes both ways. Well, someone might be thinking right about now. You know, I used to be a member of another church. And that pastor would never, ever listen to a word I had to say. Well, my friend, maybe you're right. Maybe you're absolutely right. And maybe the pastor was very closed, closed minded to other people's suggestions. But my friend, let's be honest. Could it be, is it at all possible that maybe you were the problem or maybe you were part of the problem? Could that possibly be now before you say, absolutely not. Before you say that in some marriages, some people want their own way be it the husband, be it the wife. Some guys, they get married and they find afterwards that their wife is extremely that way. She, she wants her way only. Some ladies, after they get married, find out that their husband, the one they just got married to is, is, is a bully and it's his way or the highway. That happens. It happens. And sometimes what happens because these people are never happy unless they get their own way in a marriage. Sometimes what they do is they stop, start dropping hints to their marriage, beloved, their partner, their mate, they drop little hints. And when those hints don't get acted upon, then they start making suggestions, suggestions. And when those suggestions are not acted upon, then they are outright requests. They make requests. And when those requests are turned down, then they start making demands. And if still they can't get what they want, then they start threatening and they'll threaten to walk out. 
they'll threaten to hold back all their affections. They may even threaten to kill themselves. That's sad, but it happens. Sometimes in churches, you do get pastors that are Adolf Hitler, pastor Hitler. That's a horrible way to say it, isn't it? But then you also get churches where some of the people are little Adolf Hitlers. It goes both ways. Let's be honest. It does happen. Now here's a suggestion before you marry that person, before you marry that person, go and talk to the people that they work with. Talk to the people they work with. Ask if your prospective mate is closed minded. If they're a loner, if they get angry, if they don't get what they want around here, I suggest maybe that you go talk to the deacons of grace Baptist church, because I work close with those deacons and I've worked with them for years. Go ahead, call them up, talk to them, see what they think. Their opinion of the pastor is the pastor a bully in those meetings. Does he always push his own agenda through railroad the meetings? Does he do that? Or does he look for feedback and suggestions? Is he patient, willing to set something to one side until things can be thought through and prayed over more? Go ask the deacons. Go ask the assistant pastors that I work with. And I work with them on a daily basis. Ask them the same question. Is the past pastor some kind of ruthless dictator with, with a whip? Or does he encourage feedback? Does he encourage teamwork? Go ahead. Ask the, the, uh, the, the pastors. You might also want to ask some of the church people who are, listen, actively serving the Lord here at Grace Baptist Church. I don't suggest you go and ask someone who's not lifting a little finger. Go and ask people that are actively serving the Lord here at Grace Baptist Church. What's it like? What's the pastor like? Have you had interaction with him? What's he like to work with? These people will give you a good idea. You may also want to look at the overall church fruit. We have 22 years of history here. Look at the overall picture. Look at the souls that have been saved. Look at the missionaries that have been supported. So the gospel can truly go around the world. We can do the great commission. Look at the training programs that we provide in the church, including the Bible college. Look at the lives in this church that have been blessed. Look at the very healthy financial situation of our church. And then you make your own decision whether Grace Baptist church is the church family for you or not. If you're not a member and you don't think this is the right church, move on, find another church, find one that you're going to be happy in, but ask these questions before you get involved. If you're already a member of grace Baptist church and you say, I don't like it here. There's nothing keeping you here. You're free to go anytime you want. You say, but Pastor, are there no disgruntled people at Grace Baptist Church? Well, I'm not sure I know the answer to that question. I'm not sure I know if there's any. I suppose it's very normal for the average Bible-believing, gospel-preaching church to have a few disgruntled people. I look in the Bible, were there any disgruntled people in Israel under the leadership of Moses? Well, yeah, there was a few. I look in the New Testament. Were there any disgruntled people there in the New Testament churches? Well, yeah, I guess there were a few. I look around. Are there any disgruntled people in marriages today? Are there any husbands that are disgruntled at their wife or any wives disgruntled at their husbands? I guess there are a couple. But I'll tell you something. The greater majority of Christians in Bible believing gospel preaching churches are happy and content. They know their church isn't perfect. Their pastor isn't perfect, but Hey, they're not perfect. And together as imperfect people, 
They move and go from faith to faith serving the Lord. Did you know that one day every pastor must stand before Jesus Christ and give account of the people he's pastored? Did you know that it's in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. Every pastor will stand before Jesus Christ one day and Jesus will ask him, well, what about this person in your church? How were they to pastor? And the pastor is going to have to give an honest answer if they were sweet or if they were sour, the pastor is going to have to give an answer to Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13, 17, check it out for yourself. And so I suggest you be very careful not to let any disgruntled person anywhere from forming your opinions for you. You form your own opinions. Okay. There's plenty of internet websites that'll tell you all churches are bad. They'll tell you all pastors are bad. They're out there because I've seen them. That's like saying all husbands are bad. That's like saying all wives are bad. And you know, that's not true. There's no perfect husband. There's no perfect wife, but you know, there's a lot of pretty good ones out there. Did you know that? There's some pretty good ones out there. Ladies, if you happened to have yourself a pretty good husband, why don't you turn to him right now and look him in the eye and say, sweetheart, you're a pretty good husband. Gentlemen, if you happen to have a pretty good wife, why don't you turn to her right now? Look her in the eye. Maybe take her by the hand. Say, honey, you're the best wife. Why don't you do that right now? And so if Grace Baptist church is your church home and if Grace Baptist church has been faithfully serving the Lord and getting the job done. And if the people at Grace Baptist church are getting their lives blessed. And if God is being glorified, then I suggest to you, if it ain't broke, then don't think it needs to be fixed. Is that good advice or no? Today is world nation Sunday and folks, we rejoice at all of the wonderful people God has given us. They're from all over the world. God has brought us together into one family to make up the family of God here at Grace Baptist church. And we have a wonderful family. We do. And I believe we have wonderful harmony too. I've experienced it week after week, year after year. I've been around here for a while, 22 years. I can tell you, God is blessed. Grace Baptist church. I love every single one of you. Did you catch that? Every single one of you. I love you all. And I pray for you daily. Cause I want to, cause I love you. You're on my heart. You are my life. And I want to take you to the Lord every day. And I pray for you. I do. But I need you to do two things for me. Two things. Number one, I need you to keep putting off the old man. Keep doing it. If you love me, if you love your savior, Jesus, keep putting off the old man. Do it every day. Keep putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep doing it. It's a habit. Even I have to practice the habit, but I need you to do this for me. I need you to keep growing this way. I need you to keep doing this, putting off the old man with its pride, its jealousy, its envy, its anger, its sin, put all that stuff off every day. Number two, I said there were two things I need you to do. Number one, put off the old man every day. Number two is I need you to strengthen me. Yes, you heard me right. I need you to strengthen my hands. When they had battle and war down below, Moses went to the top of a mountain and he held up the rod of God in his, in his hand. He left, lift up his arms like this and they had victory, but his arms got tired and came down. So two godly men, Aaron and her came to his side and held up the arms of the man of God. 
Because when his arms came down, Israel was losing the battle. But when his arms went back up, Israel was winning the battle. And I need your help. I need you to strengthen me. I need you to strengthen my hands to be the best pastor that I can be. And I'll tell you how you do that. How, how is it that you strengthen me? Number one, you pray for me daily. You pray for me daily for God's wisdom and God's grace and God's protection and God's peace. You pray for me daily. Number two, you share with me your thoughts and ideas. I I like to think God has given me some wisdom, but we're a family and a husband and a wife. They need each other. And the wife sometimes will have marvelous wisdom. The husband never thought of, and he needs her to share that with him. Now, I think that's very important. Share with me your thoughts, suggestions, your wisdom, but listen carefully. Then leave it with me. Leave it with me. Trust me. Leave it with me. I write things down. Don't keep sharing the same thing over and over and over. No one in the world likes that. That's how you become a nag. We don't want that but we do want the wisdom that God may have given you and absolutely get in touch with me and call me. You can email me, send me a text, write me a postcard, whatever you like, but share with me your thoughts. Number three, keep our church family strong. Keep our church family strong by faithfully giving, faithfully serving. This is how you will strengthen me. Now I got to finish up here and let me ask you a question. Has God spoken to your heart today? We're talking world nation Sunday, all of the different people from around the world gathered together to make up this family of God. Has God spoken to your heart today about someone in the church that you're at odds with? You're in a bit of a huff, a bit of a tiff at this man or at that woman. Maybe it's someone older than you. Maybe it's someone younger than you, but you have it in your head that somehow they've offended you or they didn't do what you wanted, or they didn't shake your hand or who knows what, but for whatever reason, are you at odds with any other Christian in this church? You don't talk to them. You avoid them. You need to make that right. Don't let that go on another day. You go to God right now in prayer and say, God, help me. I'm struggling with this person. Help me. Oh God, to love them. Like you love them. Help me to love them. Like you love me. You need to fix that today. Let me ask you this question. Has God spoken to your heart about getting involved and serving the Lord? here at your church. This is your family. Can you imagine mom and dad and there's a bunch of kids and none of the kids did anything to help in the home or maybe three out of five kids helped in the home and two of them just wouldn't do, wouldn't lift a finger. Has God spoken to your heart? Are you even tithing? Has God spoken to your heart? If he has, you need to fix that today. Today, you need to bow your head now. Ask God, oh God, help me. Help me, please, to get back on the bandwagon and to be active, productive member of this family. And this last question. My friend, do you know for sure you're even part of the family of God? Do you know for sure if you died, you would instantly be with the Lord Jesus? Or is there a question mark? Have you been playing a game, making others think you're a Christian? It happens. You need to fix that today. Behold, today is the day. You need to ask Jesus to forgive your sins and come into your heart right now. Now, Can I ask everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes? I want to lead you in a prayer. 
Bow your head, close your eyes with me. Please do that right now. Heavenly father, I pray for all of the, the dear folks of grace Baptist church who are saved and we've got members and we've got faithful attenders. And I thank you for each and every one. And I pray, Oh father God, that you would show them ways, greater ways that they can be a blessing one to another and a blessing to their pastor. And that together we can purify ourselves to be that, that chaste bride of Christ. We would be like a crown that Jesus would wear on his head. Very proud of us. Virtuous woman is like a, a crown to her husband. Help us to do that and to put away pettiness, put away selfishness, put away anything that's not Christ-like putting off the old man and putting on the new father. I pray for every born again, man, woman, young person connected with our church. You would help them to do that. And father, I pray for anyone who's not born again, who's not saved and in their heart of hearts right now, let them repent of their sins and let them receive with meekness, the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior and the Lord of their lives. And father, we pray all of this in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for watching the message today. We invite you to join us again every Sunday and Wednesday for more inspiring messages from God's word.